if you're not looking where you need to go, if you're not looking well ahead of the car and pre-planning what's happening, then you get behind, right? Well, what happens in life? What happens in business? What happens in your career? If you're not looking ahead, if you don't have great vision, you get in trouble, you get behind you, you know, it's exactly the same thing in the car. It, it can mean your life, right? Um, at 60 miles an hour, we're going 88 feet a second. You see people on our freeways all the time going 80 miles an hour. I've seen people at 100 miles an hour on the freeway. And it, it terrifies me because I know what's going to happen if they pick up that cell phone or if they just start distracted or just don't look far enough ahead if they, aren't, if they don't have that, that good vision. And so vision is huge. That's the most important component in the car. And if I could insert something there too, from a, from a mental health standpoint, from a performance standpoint, the other th the thing that I've learned is eyes up, anxiety down. If you're looking mm. further down the road, you're looking further out into the future and you're not focusing on every single little thing that, that's bombarding you, that helps I'm writing you that be down. more calm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing that from you. I love that. Oh, you're, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that is, I mean, I can... I can see that in my in the next PowerPoint slide that we do at our class, eyes up, anxiety down, because that that totally applies in the car too. Because when you're really ahead of the car, even at extreme speeds, 150 miles an hour or more, um, you know, watch a Formula One race. Those guys are the average speeds sometimes are way way above 100. If they're not ahead of it, their anxiety goes way up. You start to see it in the car control. The, the wheel starts moving more. They start braking too hard. Yeah, eyes up, anxiety down. I'm gonna completely steal yeah. that from you. It, you know, it's it's fascinating too because I just um, got back and we shared the videos of it. My wife and I both did the the Porsche Barber uh, uh, track experience, and and I saw that in the instruction because they put us in groups of four, and then there's an instructor taking the lead, and there was one guy in our group who was always in the back, always mm. lagging behind, and the instruction that this experienced person was giving him was eyes up look further down the road. He wasn't telling him speed up, right? which was fascinating, right? He didn't say speed up. He said, look further down, eyes up. And if he did that, then he felt comfortable speeding right. up and catching up with the rest of us. He had time to react, right? And again, right. It's the parallel to life is, is so good, right? If we have vision, if, if we're eyes up, if we're looking ahead of us in our lives and what's coming at us, then we'll, we're better prepared to react to it proactive versus reactive. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's flip that question. Are there principles of business that apply to racing or principles of personal professional success that apply to racing? Well, especially when you get into the economics of racing, then it's tremendous, right? Um, even, you know, what you're experiencing now, because you've bought a dedicated car. If, if you don't understand the economics of that, that like you say, that car is going to become a money pit very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. once again, that business minor, you know, having some essential basic business skills is going to help you manage uh, maintaining that car and getting many years of, of fun out of it. Um, in addition, though, I think handling stress, um, a race car is a very stressful environment. Uh, race drivers are superb athletes, especially at the higher levels. And this is something people don't understand. Um, when I was racing GT3 Cup in a closed cockpit car, uh, temperature in the cockpit could be 120 to 140 degrees, even out on our track. And so mm. uh, I wore a cool suit with ice water flowing through the suit and all that, but it's still just a brutal environment. Then you take that car in that heat and that, that you know, stress, and you put yourself out there with like 30 to 40 other cars. And everybody out there is trying to beat you, <laughs> right? There's no, right? There's no love lost. To, we can all be great friends. The minute that green flag drops, it gets real serious real fast and it's very stressful. Average heart rate of a race driver will be 160, 170 for two hours or more. You know, it's just a brutal environment that carries straight over to life and business. I've sat in many executive level business meetings where my heart rate was 150, 160. I had venture capitalists who had loaned us millions and millions of investment dollars, uh, breathing down my neck as to, you know, why aren't we performing better? You know, what do we need to do to improve our performance? All those things carry straight over. There's a lot of data analysis in racing now. You can't hide from the data. All of the cars uh, carry data analysis. And so you come back in and you've got a 
not only your race mechanic, but you've got a data guy sitting there. And he says, you know, if you had just braked 27 feet later into turn one, you would have picked up, right. you know, five little choices of a second. And you're like, yeah, little- hey, Matt, how about you get in the car and show me how to do that? You know, But after a while, you realize um, those data guys are everything to you. So what that brings up again is the team, right? And again, why I love to be a coach. When I raced with a team, I had all these wonderful support people and they wanted me to win. And that's, that carries straight over into business and into life, build a great team, you know, be a good coach. And that, that's probably the biggest thing I love about racing. If you liked this video and want to listen to the full episode, go to your favorite podcast app and subscribe to the Dave Crenshaw Success Project. You can also find all the full episodes at successproject.show.